Well, good evening, folks, and welcome to day number 30, God's Commandments and Abiding in Christ, day number 30. Yes, it's a beautiful, bright, sunny Alberta afternoon. Uh, wherever you're joining from, I hope you're able to enjoy a little bit of the sunshine today. Let's bow our heads before we begin. Father in heaven, I would ask that you would just speak through the author of this little book to us. Lord, help us to understand what you want us to know today so that we will be better fitted to serve you today, tomorrow, and for the rest of our lives. Lord, we look forward to a day when we are not confined to our homes and, and practicing distancing, but we can come together. But until then, Lord, continue to fortify our hearts and minds with your word. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Day 30 today, God's Commandments and Abiding in Christ. Obedience to God's commandments and abiding in Christ go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. Jesus said, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. John 15, 10. Jesus the Holy Spirit and God's law are inseparable. When we abide in Christ, he abides in us. The Ten Commandments will become an integral part of our life because the Holy Spirit will be writing them on our hearts. 2 Corinthians 3.3 says, You are manifestly an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not in ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tables of stone, but on the tables of flesh, that is, of the heart. It says an epistle of Christ. That means that we are basically a living sermon, a living testimony, a living message for him. Uh, in fact, it was Jesus who before his incarnation gave Moses the Ten Commandments. God, who gave the commandments, revealed himself to Moses as the I Am. Exodus 3.14. Then Jesus claimed to be the I Am of the Old Testament, John 8.58. In Paul's letters, we find many instructions concerning the attitudes and behaviors the Lord wants us to exhibit in our life. Paul gives very explicit instruction concerning the behavior in Ephesians 4, 22-32. Why is so much space in the Bible given to inform us of the behavior God wants us to follow? The reason is that we need to know the attitudes and behaviors that he wants us to have so we can be aware of situations when we are tempted to behave wrongly. If we didn't know God's will in these areas, we wouldn't choose to let Christ manifest that aspect of his character in us. For example, if believers don't know it is wrong to hold on to anger and say something crit uh, critical when someone wrongs them, they won't turn their thoughts away from the anger and the critical spirit they begin to feel. They won't choose to let Christ manifest his non-anger and his non-critical spirit in the situation because they are unaware that anger and critical spirit are wrong. And so, if they will not reflect Christ's character in that particular situation, they have not begun developing Christ's character within themselves in other areas of their life. Also, the Ten Commandments are inseparably connected to love. Jesus made this very clear in his teachings. The Apostle Paul taught that love and the Ten Commandments refer to the very same experience in one's life. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments say, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you not shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, all are summed up. By saying this, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Romans 13, 8 to 10. The first four commandments reveal how we love God, and the last six tell us how we are to love one another. Hence, abiding Christ abiding in us, the Ten Commandments, love, and intimately knowing Jesus are all closely related. You cannot have one without the others. John wrote of this close connection in his first letter, 1 John 2, 3-6. 1 John 2, 3-6. Now by this we know that we know him if we keep 
his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought also to walk just as he walked. How do we know we're walking with Jesus? Because we have his attitude within us, because we have his spirit within us, because we are behaving in a Christ-like manner. John clearly links our relationship with Jesus, his commandments, love, and abiding in him all together. He says that if we abide in Christ, we will be walking or living as he lived. Why? Because we will be growing more and more like Jesus in love and character. Our lives will be lives of obedience to God's Ten Commandments. So if we are to reveal God's character in this last generation, we must do so by abiding in Christ daily, by letting Him live out His righteous life in us and through us. I just want to end with a little prayer thought at the bottom of the page. Remove our law-breaking tendencies from us. Give us a heart of obedience. Write your law in our hearts that we may be faithful to your word. Hard to believe we're on day 30 already, but I hope that this journey is, is benefiting you the way it's been benefiting me. We ever, never more than we do now, we need to have Jesus in our lives. The end is, is near, even at the door. Uh, today is the day to make a decision. If you haven't fully and, and fully become a citizen of heaven, make that decision just now. If you've been holding something back, give it to Jesus just now. Make a choice that as for you and your house, you will serve the Lord. Because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord as well. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, we ask that you will be with us this evening. We thank you for a beautiful sunny day. Lord, we thank you that it's the Sabbath day, a day when we can rest from our toils and we can spend time in your word and with brothers and sisters in Christ. Even if we are far away, we're drawing close together in spirit and in heart. Lord, be with us now as, as the Sabbath hours draw to a close and a new week begins. Let us continue to draw closer to you and closer to one another through this experience. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, folks, and have a wonderful rest of your evening.